This is me 30 years ago. It was the ending of my dragon speech, in which I used the metaphor of fighting a dragon to represent the struggle to create art on the computer. For truth! For beauty! For art! I was a lot younger then. I have chased the dragon for 30 years, and I have suffered failure after failure. But at long last, I caught up with him. Now, nobody ever kills the dragon, but I got a piece of him. I have finally achieved my goal. I have created genuine interactive art, and I call it La Morte d'Arthur. Now, there's certainly plenty of non-interactive art being made with computers. And there's plenty of highly interactive stuff being made on computers. And there's lots of stuff that has interactive content and artistic content. But the interactive content and the artistic content are separate. You experience one or the other, but not both simultaneously. But Le Mort d'Arthur is in my cosmically objective opinion, the first piece of software with substantial artistic content that is created by the interaction itself. I have spent 30 years publicly admitting my failures, and now I am publicly declaring my success. On the surface, it looks pretty much like any other choice-based design. Now, most choice-based designs have something like a tree architecture. Le Mort d'Arthur's architecture looks more like this. Well, yes, there are some secondary trees at a few places, but they are not of primary significance. Le Mort d'Arthur does not rely on branching for its interactivity. Now, you're probably thinking, how the hell can this work? And I got to admit, it's, it really is pretty weird. You see, the architecture looks more like this. The player gets multiple choices, but they don't lead to any branching until the end. So, what's the point of these choices? Here's the trick. There are a bunch of global variables built into the design and the player's decisions alter the values of those global variables. At the end of the story, the values of those global variables determine the outcome. You may object that this is lousy design because it provides no feedback to the player. Good feedback is essential to a game. How else can you provide your player with a smooth learning curve? You're trying to teach your player in tiny little steps, one step at a time, and that requires you to provide your player with frequent tiny little bits of feedback. But stories don't work that way. Let's take Lord of the Rings as an example. How many times did Gandalf say, You're doing a great job, Frodo? Never. Nor did he ever say, You shouldn't do it that way, Frodo. Here's the feedback that Frodo and his friends got. First, they got chased by the Black Riders and very nearly caught and killed. Then the Witch King stabbed Frodo with his poisonous sword, and that very nearly killed him. They're threatened by orcs, an avalanche, some kind of octopus monster, a cave troll, a balrog, and they got Gollum following them. It's one damn thing after another. What kind of feedback is that? Stories communicate big ideas, ideas that can't be communicated in tiny little steps. The meaning of a story does not become apparent until the very end. What if the Matrix movie had ended here? (laughs) 
It would have been a completely different story if this had been the ending. What if Star Wars Episode Six had ended like this? You will be destroyed. <laughs> And Star Wars would have been a lot different if this had been the ending. Nothing is clear until all the pieces come together at the end. And that's how Le Morte d'Artour works. You cannot appreciate it with a quick dip of the toe in the water. You must experience the entire story in order to understand it. The hard work wasn't in the architecture or the programming. The problems that kept me up at night, the problems that I agonized over, were the authorial problems arising from the design of the story itself. I spent months analyzing the design and figuring out how to structure the narrative so as to present the necessary context and moral dilemmas to the player in the best possible order. I threw away as much stuff as I kept. Much of the meat of the interaction lies in the player's conversations with Merlin, in which Merlin torments him with questions about the meaning of life, what Arthur's purpose in life is, and what he can learn from the deaths of others. These are difficult discussions for which there are no easy answers. The confusion that the player experiences in these discussions is itself part of the message. Le Morte d'Arthur is different in other ways. It's about the meaning of life, about one's own purpose in life, and about the significance of one's own death. It lacks any spectacular 3D graphics or monumental music. It'll take at least three hours to read through the thing, and probably a lot more. Most gamers lack the attention span to cope with Le Morte d'Arthur. They'll have a quick look at it and walk away. This doesn't bother me. You can't expect a return if you're not willing to make an investment. But I promise you this. If you are willing to make the investment of playing Le Morte d'Artour all the way through, and maybe even a second or third time, then the return you get will be greater than anything you have ever experienced in any computer game.